I've said before that in most games, my default is to be the good guy. If I'm going to be evil, I have to make a conscious choice to do the wrong thing, or the evil thing, or the selfish thing. This is really true in games like, as I've said before, Mass Effect Dragon Age RPGs, where you're really crafting the moral code of who your character is going to be in that world. There is an exception, though. And I gotta preface this by saying that in real life, I am a very nice guy, similar to how I try to be in those other RPG games. But whenever I play a game where I am put in a position of political power, that seems to change, and I don't know why. And the greatest example that I can think of to demonstrate that fact is <laughs> a game I really enjoy playing, kind of for that reason which is called The Guild 2. Now, The Guild 2 is set in, um, I think it's, I want to say, 16th, 17th century Europe. And you choose a way, not, not, not a way of life, um, a vocation, where you're either like a sort of bakery or business owner, a blacksmith, um, a member of the clergy or um, physician, or you can be a rogue, a bandit who's just robbing people blind, which sounds like a lot of fun, but as I've seen is probably one of the hardest ways to play the game. I personally do better when I'm playing as I think it's a partition. They like can own like an inn or manufacture food, own farms, that kind of thing. That's where I shine. And it's in this game that I found I've got a really really nasty mean streak whenever I start to amass political power. And I hope that's something that would never bleed over into real life, although I have no intention of going into politics, so we may never know. Hopefully. <laughs> but in the game, it started off innocently enough. Um, I opened up a small inn. I was selling beer and porridge. Can't get much more basic than that, right? Made a little bit of money. Doing okay. And the whole way the game works is that as much as it's about building a business... Uh, you've also got to juggle a uh, relationship and building a family because you have to ensure that when you pass on, because your character has a lifespan, he will die. The one you start with is not the one you keep. You have to progressively grow your family. Uh, ideally, more sons, the better, because daughters tend to get sort of eaten up into other families, as it was back in the day. So you want to have enough Enough of a family tree to ensure that your name is going to survive past your lifespan. And at the same time, you also want to get into a seat of political power. Because the towns you'll start off in are very small to begin with. The council will probably be like the mayor and I want to say the captain of the guard and maybe like the head of the treasury board or something. But as the town grows and develops and the years go on, it'll go from three seats to five seats all the way up to, like, uh, anywhere, I'm trying to remember how big the town council was in mine, at least 10, I think. And you've got to manage alliances, make deals, uh, maybe you need to threaten some people, collect blackmail, uh, have some of your henchmen spying on everyone now and then, just so you've got a little bit of dirt on everybody whenever it's needed. And I got really good at doing that, too. But the way that I maintained political power was I realized very early on, okay, hold on, because, oh, sorry, I need to preface it by saying you can't control all of your family at the same time. You have to choose three members that you are in direct control of. The others, you can, you can kind of suggest what they should do, but they're basically living their own lives. And once you relinquish control of a family member, that's it. They're off living their own life. You've done your work. So I realized that very early on, the family is going to support the family. Therefore, if I could put those members into seats on the town council when someone came along and eventually tried to move themselves into the council, so long as there were enough family members that could vote for that position, I could essentially keep my seat indefinitely. So I positioned myself at the top, working my way up to mayor, had my wife at one seat below me, the son filling the other slot, and then sprinkled family members throughout the rest of the council. And it reached a point where basically the entire family was running the town, and there was no one who wasn't a member of the family on the council. Which, if it sounds very seedy, it was. It, it was ruthless. And I also realized, I mean, th there's all kinds of things you can do. 
I'm really just kind of selling the guild too right now, aren't I? But it's a fantastic game, and this story does come with a point. As the mayor, you can cook the books and embezzle money, which I never did despite doing a bunch of other really shitty things like if my competition was opening up a rival tavern across town, I might move the guards to another part of the city and then have somebody light that building on fire. I might threaten people with blackmail. And oh, I also realize that because uh, you can be taken to court and this is especially useful if you choose the rogue path. People will eventually take you to court for robbing them. Funny how the legal system works that way. Or maybe if like if you if you if you're a more legitimate citizen as I was, they may bring to attention uh, maybe you've threatened them or blackmailed them. And they've got some evidence about that or some other shady dealings that you may have been a part of. And what I've discovered or what I learned rather in playing the game was that the evidence only matters if they make it to the ca- uh, to the courtroom. Now, I'm not saying I murdered them, because no, I did not. But, and here's the funny part, if they don't make it at the assigned court date to the courthouse, any evidence that they were going to submit gets thrown out and is no longer viable. So nobody died, but on the way to the courthouse, maybe somebody got beaten up on the road and left in a cornfield. And by the time they woke up, the court case was over, the evidence had been thrown out, My family member was exonerated and life went on. Suffice to say, I never got taken to court. Well, actually, no, that's not true. One time I got taken to court. (laughs) But unfortunately for the person who brought the evidence against me, the three uh, members presiding over the court case were members of the family. The judge included. So, yeah, the evidence got thrown out and the other guy had to pay court fees. The system works! All this to say that uh, the whole point of the game is to make your family the most powerful, and if you're playing in Dynasty mode, you are meant to be the last family standing. And this is where I say that I am really abusive when it comes to power. Now, on the one hand, the people love me because I drop taxes down to like almost nothing. But over the course of uh, two family generations... I had ownership of most of the businesses in town, the town council was ruled with an iron fist, and I think one of the grandsons was in charge of the clergy, which is an interesting little side of the game where you can actually whip people up into a religious frenzy and sick them on people or businesses, and I may have done that more than once, three times, possibly five, I can't remember. But either way, it ended up being that there was my family and one other family left in the game. They had a few businesses in town, and that really was starting to cut into my business because somehow they'd managed to not only survive but thrive. And I worked hard to make sure I was the only game in town, so this was a bit of a thorn in my side. In the end, it turned out that there were only two family members left, and they were too old to have children, but they were still alive, and they were clinging to life. And back in the 1600s, living to the age of 70 was amazing. My guy lived to be like 89, and I think that's like almost unheard of back then. Anyway, so they were still alive and kicking and doing quite well. And the way I ended up dealing with them was sending the guards to another end of the city, firebombing their business, firebombing their house. And then I was going to actually do something. I was going to get my own hands dirty for once. I'd hired an assassin to take out the patriarch of their family. Uh, But before I had the chance to... A random assassin came out of nowhere and took him out for me. I didn't hire this one. I didn't tell him to do it. My guy was ready to go, and this guy just got shanked in the streets. And the only thing I did was prevent the guards from intervening. Similarly, when the uh, last member, the matriarch of the family, she had somehow managed to contract leprosy. And you can actually get this treated in the game. You go to a nearby hospital, you pay a fee, you have a recovery time, and your character is okay. You know, leprosy. But, because I own the hospital, I decided to give all the staff the day off and I closed the place early. So when she went to get treated, she couldn't get health care. Because I own the hospitals. And that is how you can use power to your advantage. Destroy your enemies, crush them, see them driven before you. And I'd say hear the lamentations of the women, but this one caught leprosy and died in the streets, so I didn't hear any of that either. All this to say that apparently, when I'm put in a position of amassing and maintaining political influence and using my power to benefit my family, in a video game sense at the very least, I am a ruthless, cutthroat, dictatorial, I think that's the right word, 
damn near Lord Baelish-esque bastard. Suffice to say that if I were put in any other role where I had to be benevolent, i.e. in an RPG where I am the hero or protector of the downtrodden, I fill that role quite well. But as soon as you give me any kind of authority in a game, I turn heel really quick. And it's something that I, I don't even know it's happening until I'm so deep in it that I'm like, well, there's no going back now I've already set myself on this road. Really makes me hope that at some point there is a more politically focused game version of Game of Thrones because I think I would do amazingly well, particularly in a Baelish role. Anyway, <laughs> bit of a ramble, but uh, a fond memory and something that, uh, man, I want to go back and play the guild too now that I think of it. If you've got any games that you feel sort of do a similar thing where despite your best efforts, it brings out a side of you that's maybe a little darker than you prefer that would be an interesting discussion topic so please feel free to add them into the comments section down below if you enjoyed the video by all means share it around and until next time my name's rye take care of yourselves and don't play against me in the guild too